Alright guys, welcome back to Valorant News. What a day in the North American VTT with Cloud9 upsetting NRG in a crazy series we'll dive into. Some roster main UN tier 2, but Marv putting on a show and an absolute clinic up against MIBR and making the statement very clear he is not going to be leaving this Sentinels team anytime soon. Very much in Twitter, here. Your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Plenty to discuss. Thought this was nice here with Marv and Aspas kind of, uh, you know, hugging it out. Good friends these guys. So that is always nice to see. Also, quick update on what's going on in the Pacific region. I know there was a bit of drama about this because Detonation versus Team Secret was going down yesterday. And Detonation, despite being the other Japanese team that isn't Zeta Division, which is hopeful to make us a Masters Tokyo, they're not looking so good so far. And there was some talk about their strats, the way they're playing here and some mistakes they were making. I know that Boaster was kind of defending them and saying, look, seeing a lot of negative stuff towards teams on a timeline recently. Teams are not at a high end level yet. We barely have enough IGLs. Region aren't as good as others. Some regions aren't as good as others, such as the Pacific region. The KM Wally is actually difficult to do. We don't even do it as Fnatic, the best team in the world. All I see is that they need more protocols. But fundamentally, they are struggling at detonation, right? They ended up 0 5. They won one map so far. Talon 0 4, 1 8 map count. So that's kind of chalked for them. It's the top of the ladder here between T1, Zeta, Paper X, Genji, DRX, where the three master spots will be decided. And yeah, detonation aren't quite where they need to be right now. But they can improve, hopefully, going forward as well. Big update as well on the North American Challenger side. Redux here, who just turned 16, I think, yesterday or the day before, is now joining Oxygen Esports. So he's joining their starting roster as well. This is a big deal. Redux has been one of these players that's been going around as a very promising talent. Shows how much talent there really is here in the pipeline, but he's joining instead of Randy Savage, replacing him on the starting roster. So, yeah, 16-year-old. I believe that's how old you have to be to compete in the Challenger side. And, uh, well, he's now 16. So straight into Oxygen starting roster. So we'll see how he gets on. But very interesting to see these cracked out young guys, how they fare. Also an update on the not so cracked out older guys. Steel is going to be benched against Shopify Rebellion. Now disguised ever since they brought Ye in have not been looking particularly good. The first series they played was pretty woeful to be honest. They needed to improve substantially. They will have a chance to do so in the next game they play against SR. But Steel, their IGL is moved to the bench now. This is really strange. I don't exactly know who they're going to bring in instead. I don't know if they have anything planned or lined up or whether they're going to bring Exalt back for a series or something because they made a couple of changes. Steel stayed as they were IGL. I thought that made sense but in terms of performances it wasn't really working out and whether this is a long term move just because they say he will not be playing next week in the match against SR as a roster update. So this doesn't necessarily imply that he's been benched permanently or even removed permanently. This is seemingly a more of a trial period. They want to try something else out. Still, obviously, if he's not there, he can't IGL the team, which means who's going to IGL the team? Is he going to IGL the team, right? I know there was the joke that went around at the start of the season for Cloud9, that that's what was going to be happening, but um, I don't think that was ever really the case. So, a bit of a strange one there for Disguise. Intrigue your thoughts in the comment section below on exactly what's happening there. I did want to share this quickly as well, actually, which I thought was entertaining of uh, Toast saying, I like how Toast is always caught up on all the latest memes, that they're bringing in Baby J and was like, um, oh, well, we can't actually bring in Baby J because if we did it would be unfair for the rest of the Franchise League. Cloud yeah, we also can't get Baby J or the games will be too easy. The will be too easy? The games will be too easy. Oh yeah, everyone else Definitely competing for second. Yeah, team, that guy should only play in franchising. Or else it's too, it's league. not fair. So, I mean, Baby J actually here in the chat as well says LOL, so I thought this is pretty funny between all parties, but yeah, probably not going to be Baby J, but then again honestly, who knows at this point, right, because we might potentially see another disguised kind of clouted player come through. We know that they were pretending that it wasn't yay, whereas it actually was. So we'll see what Toast is up to here. But in a couple of days' time, they'll play SR. Big series of Vanity and Co, of course, looking to get a victory as well. That's massive potentially for disguised season. And they don't think their roster is capable with Steel. Someone else is going to take up the mantle, which might be justified given their recent performances. But who's it going to be? And tweet your thoughts in the comment section below. Speaking of Zeppa and that Cloud9 series, then we've got to discuss it because NRG Cloud9, this was, okay, we'll talk Sentinels in a second. But in terms of form right now, NRG was still coming in possibly as the best team in the North American size. Cloud9 had a chance 
to potentially upset that, and that is exactly what they managed to do. Now, this action here from Zels is got, uh, as he describes, a warning. I know there was some discussion, maybe he was um, going to get fined for this. I don't know if he did fully get fined. I know he was joking as if he did, but he might just have got a bit of a warning for it, but pretty entertaining nonetheless. But you've got to say, what a great performance from Cloud9 here. Jake individually has been incredibly good. I think we saw really Jake from the first series that he played that he really had the potential. But, um, you know, when you play your first couple of series on this level, there's always going to be some nerves in play. But if we get NRG, Jake really delivers the goods, takes over the series, and a 2-1 result for Cloud9. This, I think, is, look, it's Cloud9 being good, don't get me wrong, but I think a large part of this is NRG not being where they need to be at all. Ever since the optic situation fell through, Summer's been great, don't get me wrong, but the artist position in this particular role he's playing doesn't make much sense to me. I don't really fully understand it. As FNS says, lost 2-1 to Cloud9, sorry. Same story, different day. And Som says, straight up embarrassing. GG well played Cloud9, sorry to the fans and supporters, we have to be better. I know that Chet, their coach, came into this and said, we've been getting better in scrims, but we'll see if it's going to be enough because Cloud9 are good, and indeed they are good, right? And they win this series. As uh, Jake says, I'm here for a reason, I deserve it. Flow said activators. So really cool stuff for Jake. It's a great story, right? And when this change happened, I was critical of it. I think everyone was critical of it, mostly because of the reasons. It was clear that that Yay and Vanity team wasn't really working so well. I wouldn't have got rid of Yay, let's be honest here, but Jake is doing a stellar job in that particular role. Vanity, I was, you know, I didn't really mind making a change there because hadn't really achieved that much in that IGL role for some time. So I was open to Cloud9 making a change. I just thought the change they made was very questionable given the caliber of players they dropped and the caliber of players they brought in. But sometimes a new culture, new team system. Jake was a very promising player as well. And Rooney, despite some drama and not even performing super well in challenges, actually has been delivering so far on the iGelling side as well. So a 2-1 for Cloud9. We don't have the full stats for game one because there was this like lobby crash and reset and all this, but Som was taken over on the Astra 24 and 8. So at that point, you're thinking, okay, damn, this is going to be an NRG dub with Jake going 8 and 16, but he turned it around massively. 13-9 here on Pearl. It was an um, artist on the raise here that's, he's not so good on the raise that he is on the jet. And we saw Leaf on the jet on the other side, pulling up a great performance. So I'm just confused what NRG are doing with Ardis right now because they brought Ardis in here to be the chamber right now. Of course, the meta changed and chamber's no longer a thing. So he's going to be on the jet. And Ardis, great jet player. I think we've seen it plenty of times. But yet he's on the raise a lot and I'm sure he wants to improve on his raise and get better at it. But it's not really quite working yet. And then we go to the final map of the series here on the Ascent and he's on at the Killjoy and Victor is on the jet. So I know that they do this weird thing where Victor will be on the jet for some reason. But Jake on the Omen's 24 and 10 and they lose this one 13-7, comfortable. I just don't understand. Why is Artis brought in to play this weird flex role where just put him on the full-time gen? Now, I just don't understand why Victor's picking it up over Artis here because Artis isn't built to play that role. If they wanted someone to play this flex role, like, why would you get Artis in the first place? You brought him in to play Jets, so why not just let him play Jets? I don't really get it here, to be honest, what NRG are playing at, but it's still Artis, tough series for him, at minus 19, partly probably because of the reasons we just mentioned, but great performance from Cloud9. Jake was really good, Leaf on the jet as well at all time on the jet right which is pretty interesting maybe some notes to be taken there from the NRG side and even Zephyr said in this post game interview that they are very good best team in North America and they are coming for blood for their opposition but one team that's looking to take that crown off them is going to be Sentinels going forwards because finally we are seeing a level from Sentinels that we expected to see from this caliber of players and caliber of roster when it was first formed and it's taken Marv to get them to that point Marv was outrageously good yesterday he was great against Loud the other day, but even, you know, this series he played last night up against MIPR was just so good, man. I can't believe that Marv was that other team for as long as he was. And even look at this moment here for Marv as well, where he goes into the side and just pops three kills as well here on the Fracture. They're already up 1-0 at this point in the series. Marv gets 1-2-3, eventually traded, but that is enough for them to win the round. This guy just, the Iceman, man, he absolutely just cannot be stopped in this one. 87% of Marv's kills as well came in round wins. Marv kill equals round win. The impact is absolutely mega. Zeka on the duelist, winning 61% of his first duel. Super impressive. Now, I know that immediately people are going to look at 10s, right? They're going to say, damn, Sentinels, they got rid of 10s, they brought Marved in, and they're way better, which they are. I think part of that, though, a large part of it is the roles. It just makes way more sense right now. Sassy playing the role that he was actually brought in, I thought, to do. Marved on the full-time controller just is where he belongs, right? Best in the world, very much, arguably. He's certainly up there, right? Top three for sure. And 10s being gone has enabled them to get back into the roles that I think make more sense for the roster, right? So I don't think 10s was the problem, but Marved is definitely
definitely the solution. Uh, I'd say this team is very good. No hate to my old team. I love those guys and they're great players. I mean, I'd say we're pretty similar. I mean, all 10 players are good. And uh, yeah, we just know how to work together. I feel like I brought a little bit of structure too and a little bit of mid rounding. So, you know, I similar. And Marv, with this opportunity to be able to see you play on the big stage, I want to give one last chance for you to say something to all the fans who are, have been rooting for you. I appreciate you guys. And, you know, shout out to the ones who actually believed in me and didn't think I was washed. So I appreciate you guys. Oh, yeah. I am not washed. And, uh, yeah, I'm here, to, I'm here to stay. Awesome. Oh. Thank you very much, Mark, and congratulations oh, once again to the Wait, what is that supposed to mean? taking home a second Wait, what is that victory to mean? in the Americas League. Should we book our tickets to Tokyo now? Okay, let's not get overconfident here. Okay, let's let's really not get overconfident here. I want you to put the word out there that we back up. Let's not get overconfident. And as Marv makes very clear there in the post-game interview that I'm not washed and I'm here to say quite the same actually for Marv, right? Because we discussed this when Marv came in against Loud, even before that series, right? Like, will Tens return soon? And if he doesn't, or even if he does, is Marv going to stay? Because there is absolutely zero chance after this performance that Marv is going to go and Tens is going to come back in. That's not going to happen. And Kaplan actually gives a lot of credit here to Def as well. Great on-the-fly calling from Def. And I don't think Def's a good idea. I don't think it gets a lot of traction talk thrown his way but I think he's a very capable IGL and this is the thing that Sentinels now have to deal with is that their team is looking way better competitive with uh, with Loud destroyed MIBR in this series with no 10s. Ziff is here and Marv is killing it and Zekin's great on the duelist so right now there isn't really a spot for 10s to return onto the team if they were to they would either have to get rid of Def and put Sassy on the IGL which is possible and might happen down the line but um, yeah Marv coming back in just makes way more sense for the roles. Zekin can go on a roll over there which I think he's more comfortable on. Now look, Sentinels, they're two and three. This was a great win though and this really is a statement win for Sentinels to show that they can be the team that we expected this super team to be when it was originally formed and it took Marv coming in to make that happen and it took the roles to go back to what it should be I think with Sassy on the initiators, Hank Harder on the Sentinel, obviously the killjoy in this case and Def doing his thing on the flex whatever's necessary, Zekon on the jet or the rays doing super well in that particular role and then Marv just killing it on the controllers right. So so, great performance of Marv individually. I don't know what's going to happen with Tent in the future, but I'm sure Sentinels fans will be certainly satisfied with this. 13-5, 13-6 against a very solid Brazilian team in MIBR. And they move to 2-3 and three with big games to come. They still have to play EG and Crew as well. So, you would think those would be two victories and that Marv is going to try and make it happen. But very much in Twitter, your thoughts on all this stuff in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.